What is up guys, Matt McAdam, your truck editor at Driving Line. We are gonna be running the iconic Mojave Road. It's about 127 miles of dirt from Barstow to Laughlin. What is up guys, Matt McAdam, your truck editor at Driving Line, AKA Desert Chief, coming at you from the middle of the Mojave Desert. Now today I got an awesome, awesome episode for you guys. We are gonna be running the iconic Mojave Road. If you guys haven't heard of this trip, definitely put it on your bucket list. It's one of those trips that you wanna do with any vehicle, four x four, two wheel drive, pretty much anything we can make it through here if you got the clearance for it. We're going out to Laughlin for the Snore Racing Rage of the River. It's a desert race, they have it every year in Laughlin. It's usually in December. So this is a kind of a tradition for me and my buddies is to take the Mojave Road from Barstow to Laughlin to go watch this race. If you guys have never heard of the Mojave Road, it's about 127 miles of dirt from Barstow to Laughlin. And it's an old, old road that's been around for probably more than a few hundred years. It, it was a route that uh, the early settlers here in California in the west uh, coast of the United States took to get from the Colorado River to the Pacific Ocean. So it's uh, it's been around for a long time. It was used by uh, Native Americans, by settlers, uh, and now it's enjoyed mostly by off-road enthusiasts. One of the cool things about the Mojave Road is that there's so many different attractions to see along this, this trail. Uh, you got everything from uh, dry lake beds to a water crossing to lava tubes you can go and climb in and actually go underground and check out. Uh, there's a Mojave mailbox, which we'll show you guys later on today. There's even a shrine with a bunch of ceramic frogs on it. So we're going to see if that's still there. I haven't been here in about a year or so. So I don't know if you guys can tell behind me, but there's a uh, couple of Jeeps rolling up here. As I was saying, this is a really popular trail for off-roaders, overlanders, adventure seekers alike. Uh, right behind us, we got a group of guys coming in here, probably going to be taking this road on. So like I said, normally the, the trail begins around Barstow. And uh, right there at the beginning of the trail or the end of it, depending on which way you're traveling, uh, there is a water crossing of the uh, Mojave River. And the Mojave River runs from Big Bear and it drains out into the desert. And that's one of the only places along the river where it actually it flows above ground. Most of the Mojave River actually flows underground. But we've had a lot of rain recently, so it's pretty, pretty high up. The, the water level, according to USGS right now, is about four and a half feet. And it's a little bit too high for my truck and the other truck with me here, which I'll get to in a minute, uh, to go through and forward it because we don't have snorkels and our electrical stuff is, you know, exposed. Probably not a good idea. So we're going to skip that part of it. And then right beyond that, there's actually a, normally a dry lake bed called Soda Dry Lake. And right now, from what I can tell, it's pretty muddy. So we don't want to risk getting stuck out there or getting the trucks covered in mud. We're going to cut this trail to about a half of what it normally is. So I think we're gonna be running about 60, 70 miles today off-road. Uh, we just entered the trail here off of Kel Baker Road, which uh, actually goes out to the 15, Interstate 15 freeway uh, in Baker. And you cut across here and we're gonna enter the trail here. Uh, it should take us probably about four or five hours of straight driving, but you don't wanna just blast through this trail. There's a lot of really cool things to see. So we're gonna stop and check some of them out. We should be getting to our hotel by about nightfall. So without too much further ado, let me show you guys what we're going to be driving in today. I'm joined today on this epic journey with a couple of my friends here, Riley and his girlfriend, Willie. You guys excited for today? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Riley uh, brought his F-150 out here, and uh, we're going to see if we can complete the trail this time, right, buddy? <laughs> to be the first time in this one. <laughs> Find some wood to knock on. Buddy, why don't you tell me a little bit about your truck? It's a 95 F-150. 
you know, equal length beams, four length coilover bypass bumps on every corner, uh, full two inch cage, Chevy six liter turbo 400. So this is pretty much what you'd call like a, a trophy truck? Hell no. <laughs> <laughs> this thing is like a four man's free runner at some point. Just to put that rumor to rest, it's kind of an inside joke where people call our vehicles trophy trucks. For those of you guys who don't know, these are pretty much just called a pre-runner. Uh, trophy trucks are a whole different animal. So you've had this thing for how long? About five years, six years? Yeah, six years. Yeah. He got it on Valentine's Day. <laughs> oh, you just remember that piece of it, don't you? Oh, yeah. It was fun. I loved yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> and you like driving it, riding in this thing, right, Willie? Really? Riding in it. It's a lot yeah. of fun. <laughs> you haven't driven it before, though. No. Yeah. Maybe we'll change that some, someday. I don't know if I'm no. He's saying no. <laughs> no. Nobody drives it. Well, either way, this is Riley's pride and joy right here. Moving on to my truck. Yes, it's here. I know you're probably thinking, what the hell? The last episode that featured this vehicle, my 91 Toyota, it was dead in its tracks, sitting in a shop, getting ready to get an LS swap and TTB swapped on the front end and linked. But as you can see, literally none of that has happened. <laughs> the truck is here. It is operational for the most part. It runs pretty good, actually. Um, I do have a slight misfire right now. Actually, it's probably not even a slight misfire. It's a full-on misfire. It's a, dead miss. it's a dead miss. I can pull the plug wire off of cylinder number three, and it doesn't run any different than if it was on there. So that means there's something going on in there. It's getting ignition. It seems to be getting fuel. So I don't know if there's maybe a valve that's broken or what. But... The truck has never ran better in its life. <laughs> I made it up the mountain pass doing about 65 miles an hour in fourth gear, which is kind of unheard of for this truck because I've had it for, oh, I don't know, three, three and a half years now, and it never, never goes up the pass that quickly. Whatever it is, I'm not going to question it. It's running, it's running well, and I'm stoked to be out here and uh, do this trail again. This is going to be my, what, fifth, sixth time doing this trail? In this truck, it's definitely my fourth time fourth time your fourth time yeah i've done it with my old truck which brad now has twice and now with this one four times so this this is going to be my seventh time i have attempted in this truck one time yeah <laughs> and you completed and now, it in the bronco <laughs> yeah the bronco has made it yeah this one is not so we're gonna try and not blow the motor <laughs> up this time <laughs> but you know what guys don't don't take that as if you know this is a super difficult trail to take on it's really not it's most of it's fire road but we kind of, you know, really modify our vehicles past the point of like making them reliable. So <laughs> things break and it's usually at a really bad time or it's a spot or something where you can't get to it with a, with a trailer or it's a part that you just can't get right away. So um, this time we're hoping to make a clean run. We're going to take it slow. We just got two trucks, which means that it's going to be a pretty mellow run. We're not going to be going fast. Hopefully not stopping a whole bunch. So our goal is to get to the hotel before it gets dark, which is doable if we just stick to a pretty good pace. As you can see, both trucks are running Nitto tires. Mine's got a 35 12 50, 17 Ridge Grappler. Riley's is running a 37 12 50 Trail Grappler. A little more aggressive, more off-road, but this truck does mostly off-road driving. So it works for his truck. Mine's kind of a hybrid tire and uh, it works really well on the street when I do drive it on the street. So I'm really happy with it. Riley seems to be super stoked on his tires. It's done pretty good for the last week or so you've had him on there. Yeah, I've been yeah. pretty surprised. You had him in the mud last weekend, so we'll see how it does in open desert. Let's see. Well. Yeah. <laughs> but we're not going to waste any more time here by the side of the road. We're going to hop in the trucks and get going because we got some cool stuff to see today. Drag race. Three, two, one. first stop here at the lava tubes and as you can see behind me there's a whole lot of volcanoes around here cinder cones there's lava rocks all over the ground so we got a little bit of a trail here to hike until we get to the tubes this is uh, probably one of my favorite attractions on the Mojave Road just because it's so unique essentially that hole right there 
is the inside of the lava tube. We're going to climb down in there. There's a convenient little staircase right here with handrails. Make it nice and easy to get in. Did you already go in there? He's like on a mission. He's already down there. That's one small step for man. <laughs> one giant leap for off-road kind. <laughs> <laughs> so, deep down in that cavernous hole is where we're going. Let's watch your step. Oh, because of the rains. It's this is pretty awesome, man. I mean, where else in Southern California can you find anything like this? We're going to keep going. What do you think? Pretty cool the second time, huh? Pretty wild. It's just as cool the second time around. This is the main room here. Uh, those are the two holes up there in the ceiling that you saw earlier. And then there's two more pinholes up here that go out to the uh, to the world outside. One right there, and then the other one down by Willie over here. So I'll include the location to this spot um, in the map that I'm gonna put together for this trip, which I will put in the description for you guys. So if you guys want to come out and explore this super awesome cool lava tube, you'll know exactly how to get here. All right, well, we got to keep going. So we're going to climb our way. Oh, caught my backpack on the rock. Out of the lava tubes here. Hello world. Lava tubes. Gotta love it. Just arrived at our second stop for today. Such a 90s horn. <laughs> that was a little narrow. <laughs> for you. Yeah. yeah, the last time you were here at the Bronco, which is like what, four or five inches shorter and narrower than this, right? Almost 10. 10 overall? Yeah, 86 wide. That's this pretty is considerable. 94. Yeah, that's pretty considerable. Very wide. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so this site here, let me turn around so you can see it, is kind of a permanent installation um, that is in the ground over here. It's basically just a mailbox. And what's in it is uh, things that people who have traveled past uh, this spot here have put there. It's kind of one of those take a penny, leave a penny kind of places where you put something in the box, you take something out of it, just kind of memorial, like memorandum things in there. And then there's a, uh, a log book that you can sign. And we've signed it, gosh, five times now, six times. And they keep changing it. And then um, this is actually kept up by one of the local off-road clubs. So Riley grabbed a sticker. He's leaving one of his koozies in here for someone. You know, what's weird is usually there's like a bunch of water bottles on the ground and oil bottles and coolant and stuff for like people who may be having mechanical troubles, but it seems like nothing, nothing around here right now. This is a rite of passage, Willie. I'm so excited. You can sign your name in the Mojave logbook. 
I'm gonna put this uh, third alliance koozie in there. Good old Mojave mailbox. What do we got in here? Some aluminum foil. Man, this is pretty lame. This is, this thing used to be full of cool stuff. Well, we got the big old bottle of Frank's Red Hot Sauce. Yeah, we got the Red Hot Sauce. I used it on my sandwich yeah. right here too. We had lunch here. Oh my God. <laughs> Good times. Earplugs, a lighter, bungee cord. Brad must have been here. <laughs> Shim stack. <laughs> It's like half of a shim stick. Yeah. Who needs chapstick? Is it new? Oh, yeah. Oh, and Oh my god. Can we leave the this is cool. Like wrapper back? <laughs> it's messed up. Dude, they got tang in here. Orange? Yeah. Nice. Oh, and it's good. Oh, yeah. Orange tang. <laughs> On the go. <laughs> I don't know how old this is. It's just scored on a two dollar chap. But I'm definitely taking the tang home with me. Thank you, Mojave Mailbox. Little known fact for those of you who are a little more on the adventure side, just a mere 50 feet away from the Mojave Mailbox in the middle of the desert is the most quaint frog shrine. Oh my god. Here's the frog shrine. Willie's about to cry. Yeah, Any kind of frog or toad that you can imagine. They got metal ones, ceramic ones, plastic ones. Shut up. This is new. There's a figurine shrine on this dead stump here. There's one of Pope, Pope Francis. Oh, then she's tight. This one's more my speed. There's another, there's a gnome one over there! Oh my, look at the one on the bush! <laughs> it was scary. That's scary. Dude, I've never been this far off the trail before here. <laughs> really, there's a gnome one. <laughs> look at all these like cool Hot Wheels and there's a Jeep JK8 right there. F-150, school bus. This is rad. How have I not seen this? Broken RC cars over there. <laughs> There's a tractor. My buddy Nixon Miller will uh, really appreciate the tractor. We'll get you out here one day, buddy, when you're a little bit older. Terrifying Halloween decoration here. Oh, yeah. Oh, let's see if we have any of these. <laughs> Willie has a gnome collection. <laughs> you see anything in here that you recognize? I bought those from the store recently. They're all sun faded. That one's terrifying. There's a Santa Claus and one of the seven dwarves in here, too. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a gnome, people. This one over here doing yoga is the funniest thing I've ever seen. I know, I saw that one. That is phenomenal! <laughs> this one's just hanging. Oh, wait, yoga has a friend that fell. Oh, no. <laughs> He's doing oh, no. up dog. <laughs> up dog. What's up, dog? <laughs> oh, no. All right, so from here, we kind of go up this hill where. It doesn't look like a hill from here, but it's definitely heading uphill. And then we crest over the top, and there's a beautiful view of the valley on the other side. And uh, we're going to enter that valley, go down into Marl Springs, and then it's just this really, really heavily whooped out road for like, I don't know, five miles, probably. That's and then, the is it? Yeah. And then we reach uh, SEMA Road, which is a, a paved crossing just a highway that runs through the desert, which leads to a really cool train station, by the way. Kelso Depot, if you guys haven't been there. Um, it's a museum, you can go check it out. Uh, we're not have time for that, but we're gonna cross the highway, cross the railroad tracks, and then that's kind of where the road opens up a little bit. It's paved for a short section, and it's just basically fire road for, I don't know, 20 miles or so. And then uh, that's when we get close to Landfair, 
from Landfair is where we enter the goat trail where it kind of just follows the edge of a mountain down into a riverbed. And that's probably about 90% of the way there. We cross one more highway, go through another wash, and then we're at the Colorado River. So, sounds like a lot, but we'll get through it pretty quick. This section of Mojave Road is very whooped out. A lot of big whoops here. So I went ahead and gave Riley the signal. Oh jeez. I gave Riley the signal to go ahead and uh, just go ahead of me. Because he's got way more travel in the suspension than I do. And he can make short work of this stuff pretty easily with that truck. Being uh, four length and I beamed up front where I'm dealing with uh, about 13 inches of travel up front and about 16 out back. So it does good for what it is and what I use it for, but I just take it slow through this stuff. It's not a race, it's a marathon. All right, so right behind me here is a campground right about, I'd say, at the 60% mark or 40% depending on which way you're going. Uh, it's right next to SEMA Road, which is just a, two miles up this way a little bit towards the east on the Mojave Road. That's a easy way to get out if you have a break or if you need uh, to get a tow or something. There's a paved road right there that takes you out to the 15 freeway. So that's a, that's a good spot to keep in mind. But this is a great campsite area. Um, a lot of times people will take their time and do this trail over two, three, sometimes even four days uh, from end to end uh, and that's really the right way to do it so you can enjoy the outdoors and not just have to blow by everything we're on a kind of a time crunch so we're gonna have to get there tonight for a hotel check-in in Laughlin but uh, we've stayed at this campground before this uh, mountain right here kind of acts as a good wind block although it's the desert and it gets windy all the time so be prepared for wind but there is uh, fire pits here and uh, some nice rocks to put your tents up against or your rooftop tent on your car, whatever you got. A lot of the uh, rattling that you're hearing in here, like right there, is uh, coming from chatter bumps or uh, I call them chatter bumps in the desert, but you guys might know it as washboard. Um, it's just a pattern on the road, on dirt roads when people drive fast over them occurs naturally when you drive over it. One of the great things about these ridge grapplers is that I air them down about 12 to 15 PSI and it really, really reduces the, the jarring. Yeah, couple pretty good to out. Copy that. It's important to have a radio. He just called out a couple of G outs, which is like a big ditch in the road, usually where water runoff has gone through it. So good to have a radio, you can hear that ahead of time, ready for it. So the great thing about the Ridge Grappler is I can air it down to about 12 to 15 PSI and it really reduces the jarring feeling of uh, those chatter bumps or that washboard. A lot of people don't really air down for stuff like this, but I do not for the traction, but mainly for the, uh, the comfort inside the cab. Sometimes you beat the train, sometimes the train beats you. Riley's already on the other side having lunch, I'm stuck here. <laughs> and the truck seems to be misfiring pretty bad now. I mean, you can hear it. That's a dead miss, so I'm gonna pop the hood and see what's going on. All right, crisis averted. It was misfiring really, really bad, like a dead hole. 
uh, coming up the hill over here. And I was a little bit worried because I wasn't sure if it was like, you know, the, the cylinder finally gave up or what it was, but popped the hood and uh, Riley noticed that the number three spark plug wire had fallen off the distributor, which is causing the problem. Plugged it back in, fired it up, she's running good. They're uh, warming up the quesadillas on my intake manifold <laughs> because three liter V6 Toyotas run pretty warm. And apparently LS powered Ford F-150s don't. The landscape changes very quickly from here on out. You kind of go up in elevation a little bit and it starts looking a little more mountainous. You get some more of the, kind of like the coniferous trees, pine trees. Um, and then it drops down again into a Joshua tree forest, which is a very, very narrow section, which I can't wait to see you, you go through that. <laughs> That's gonna be fun. So we're gonna, we're gonna try to get the F-150 through it, but she's a wide, wide girl, big in the hips. And uh, <laughs> the Toyota has been just fine through there before, so I'm not too worried about that at all. But uh, this is a good spot for us to stop and have a lunch break. It's about what, two o'clock right now? So we're doing okay. So after a couple of unsuccessful attempts at flying my drone out here, we're back on the trail. I don't want to waste any more time trying to make it work. Sometimes technology just doesn't want to cooperate. So I put it away. We're back on the trail now. This is a pretty uh, easy section of the road. I know it's really loud in here. It's, just, uh, it's a fire road with a lot of washboards, so that's what you're hearing. We're moving at a pretty good pace. I don't know that we're going to get there in time, but we'll be there a little after dark. much in the thick of this uh, Joshua tree forest. There's uh, quite a bit of cactus on both sides. I don't know how Riley's just skating by, man. He hasn't hit anything yet. This part of the drive is really cool. Kind of just kick back, play some music, cruise. You don't have to go too fast. You know, I'm in second gear at about 30 miles an hour, just kind of having a good time. That's why I like this trail so much. Every time I'm here, I'm having a great time. that plastic tab right off a little bit of duct tape that's as good a trail fix if I've ever seen one always carry duct tape with you We made it to the top of the mountain pass here. This is the, uh, I guess the most technical part of this trail, but it's not even that technical. It's just uh, narrow and there's a steep drop off on the right side. You kind of just hug the mountain side and go down and then you land in this valley. No major issues other than my stupid mirror that I 
cracked into a cactus because I wasn't paying attention. Tires are looking good. There's a cactus in mine. Just gotta see that. There's a, there was a puddle back there that I tried to go around, but clearly I didn't. And it got mud all the way down the one side of the truck. <laughs> Called it out and Riley avoided it. <laughs> Lucky. <laughs> wide. <laughs> this whole time I've been like, you know, worried about you being too wide for stuff and I'm the one breaking parts and covering my truck in mud. <laughs> I'm gonna try to walk over to where Willie is because she's taking a picture with a cactus that oddly resembles her. <laughs> <laughs> that's oh, a pretty close caught. match yeah, right <laughs> i saw it from a distance i'm like there's my friend <laughs> my twin it's your twin <laughs> twinsies <laughs> that's funny that's the beauty of having these pre-runners man is you can mob through this trail pretty quickly a lot of guys will take two three days to do this whole trail but we did it in a couple of hours <laughs> i've actually done the whole thing from Afton Canyon to, to Laughlin in one day, but we ended and it was like 10 p.m. when we got there. So it was yeah. way past dark. We're gonna get on the highway here for like a half a mile and then head up just a little bit and then uh, make it right back onto the dirt. So that's the proper way for the Mojave Road. Get it clear. probably can't see me because it's practically dark out but we are in the wash heading down to the uh, final stretch there's a lot of chatter bumps in this wash as you can tell by my voice kind of trembling a little bit it's uh not as bad as it was last year because i think they just got some rain gentlemen we are at the Colorado River in fact there it is right the walker you just completed the Mojave Road how do you feel like a million dollars <laughs> finally made it in that thing well I mean with the Bronco having the problem the last time and then you yeah. made it with the Bronco then you had the F1 had a problem with the name made it with the F1 I'm pretty happy about that it's a good feeling yeah it is yeah this that is, is that's awesome for your first time Willie was it everything you wanted and more? Of course. Yeah? It's always good to see him uh, accomplish 
accomplish those goals that you've been wanting to do forever. So I'm glad we actually got it done. No trailer necessary. Aww, you're so supportive. <laughs> of course. Yeah. <laughs> Looking all good under here. Yeah, I'm covered in mud per usual. But I'll tell you what, despite all the issues I've had with this motor over the last year and the problems and me leaving it sitting in the yard forever and literally not running it for a year, it did pretty, pretty damn amazing. I'm impressed. Today we did what? How many miles was it total? Do you know? 94. 94 miles? Yeah, from Kelbaker Road where we entered until the river is 94. Miles. So I was totally off when I said 60, 70 miles. Yeah. Well guys, we made it here all the way to the Colorado River. That was a fun, fun day, about eight hours long from Cal Baker to uh, basically here at the banks of the Colorado River right behind us. Thanks for following along on this awesome journey today. This is your truck editor at Driving Line, Matt Mogadam, aka Desert Chief. I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace.